if you'd have asked me at the start of this season, would Regan Booty become a key member of this team, then I honestly would have said no. But yeah, here we are. This is the weirdest timeline. And welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons with Dinamo Zagreb, of course. If you enjoyed the series up to this point, of course, smash the like button. That'd be tremendous. Helps out Algorithm Ultras. Something, something, lovely old job. Dean Fisher. He's been kind of leading the line for us this season. Thrown into the limelight, so to speak, at the, just the age of 18. But a goal in the Champions League. A few in the league to go with it as well. Has been very, very encouraging uh, to see that we've got a player that can do this uh, while Vlade Strikic has been out. But Vlade is back. In other news, Dean Fisher's mum terrifically huge Diana Ross fan. Actually saw her live in concert once. Don't know why I know that. I mean, I do know why. She just won't shut up about it every time she picks him up from training. In addition, with all these extra jet ski-like injuries we've been getting, I have officially banned players from riding them. I should have done this before. I just figured that common sense would take over, but sadly not. To make up for it, though, we took them on a pottery-making trip, and naturally you end up with several sets of them recreating the scene from Ghost, and I'm totally fine with that. I think Vlade Strukic makes a pretty good Patrick Swayze, to be honest. So, tonight is the England versus Scotland game at Euro 2020. It is a massive one, uh, particularly when you're me and you're half Scottish. Although, really, I've still got to support the English boys in this one. But if you want to stay up to date with that game and all the others across the Euro competition, then hey, the OneFootball app is for you. You'll get the team news before anybody else. You'll get live stats and score notifications for every game across the entire competition. The same wonderful options, of course, apply to basically every league you can think of across both Europe and the rest of the world. So if you're watching the Copper America at the moment as well, they've got you covered. Follow all your favorite teams and leagues to get live breaking news updates whenever there's transfers, managerial moves, and all sorts of other things as well. So once again, thank you so much to OneFootball for sponsoring this video, and you can download the app for free using the link in the top line of the description. So, today is, of course, Ferenc Valosh. Now, oh, Mulder in there too. We are now guaranteed a place in the Europa League group stages, because as far as I'm aware, both this round and the next round, the loser drops into the group stages anyway. So, not that the pressure's off, because I would really like to at least get to the next round. I mean, I feel like there's enough to maybe get into the Champions League, but it really depends on who we draw. We've been given a draw against either Rangers or... Oh, God, who was it? Uh, Rangers or Red Bull Salzburg, which would be pretty tough, I'd say. But you never know. I, I feel like we do have to try and get past Ferenc Farris, though. However, no matter which group stages we end up in in the end, what I might do is actually bundle it so we do three live comms in each of the episode so that we get through the groups in two uh episodes because i, I want to move quickly but i also want to show you new stuff like european football and that's kind of what we focused on this season we have had a game off camera uh but i will talk about that in the middle bit as well uh, it was a game against locomotiva now we are a little bit thin on the ground quite simply I'm not a huge fan of Kem Campbell in this team uh, at the moment. You can see that since he's come in, and this was some friendly appearances, he's not really done a great deal. I prefer Matty Longstaff in there, and I vastly prefer Pepe in there as well, but we're going to have to make do without both of them for the moment, so that is concerning. However, other good news, Strikic is back, boys. He's back in the team. Vlade Strikic to lead the line today, and we're going to need him to lead the line today, I feel like. Defensively, though, I'm starting to really like this lot. Uh, I feel like Hodak, Basila... They're all very, very good. Konsa can definitely do that job as well. He obviously didn't play the last game, as you'll see here. Uh, Sobby, ooh, yeah. I feel like Mihailovic is still struggling a little bit with his injury issues, which is fine. That's to be expected. So I think I'm going to bring back Jelebert uh, there today. As for the bench, there's really not a lot of other options, except maybe Anderson in for Booty um, to bring him on instead of Sobby. Anderson was, of course, injured as well. I'd like Babic on the bench too, I think. Oh, wait. We're going to have to remove him from the bench, actually, aren't we? Because we can only have... Ah, oh, bloody UEFA, eh? Said everyone ever. No, I might leave that as it is for now, actually. We'll leave Babic out for the current uh, game. One of the things I actually did in the last game against Lokomotiva was towards the end, shifted Strikic to be just pure in the central uh, situation so that he was getting a little more opportunities on the left-hand side, on his left foot too. And yeah, I also turned down some of the pressing. I went back to more like this. And I do think there's definitely scenarios where that could work for us. And we kind of just have to sort of judge it as and when. Ryan Mami, I recognise that name. More truth. Let's go do it, hopefully. I got all sorts of cards in my back pocket. We should be winning it without any trouble at all. Well, did you see the HJK game? Just let me know. Why is my goalkeeper aggressive? Robert, Robert, lad, what's up? How much is it? Oh, I see. Okay. 19 aggression. Okay. Maybe sweeper keeper isn't the best. Maybe we should like, ha is there an opposite, like a covering goalkeeper? So we keep him as far away from their striker as possible. 
All right, then. A home against Varus Varus. We looked very good in the first game against HJK. Second one was just a bit of a random one where we could have lost that, honestly. It was very, very strange. Just didn't really turn up. Um, it's the only real bad performance we've put in this season, but we can't really afford to have those in ties like this. Also, uh, about that Mezga guy, <laughs> you know, the guy that still hasn't joined us. Um, essentially, I don't know what's going on, but I think it's something to do with the fact that it's a part exchange deal, and I don't think the game is really liking it very much. <laughs> and as a result, I tried to cancel the deal. I went back in. They then wanted more money for whatever reason. A streak down this left hand side look at the vlad he's streak itch oh my god coming back to mezger in a minute but we have to talk about vlad the i don't even know what we what would you call him vlad the something surely gets on his left foot and this is what i mean about him being on his left foot just drives past the defender they cannot keep up with him but even then i did not expect him to score this from such a tight angle across the goalkeeper one nil dinamo inside five minutes and vlad is there again come on vladdy that is exactly the start to this game that i would have wanted and it just goes to show how important he is to this team and uh, he honestly can't wait i've never had a player in this save be so prolific in front of goal um in this shape that we play Oh my god, it actually could have been two there. But yes, on the Mezca thing, I cancelled the deal because I was like, this clearly isn't going to happen. There was no option for me to actually do anything about it. Uh, they then wanted more money when I tried to put another one back in, which was annoying. Oh, but it is what it is. Uh, I agreed a 5 million deal with 2.5 and 2.5. And then unfortunately, you get the whole player won't talk to you because the deal broke down uh, notification, which isn't fantastic. Hopefully, we can go back in for him because I really do feel like even if we have to pay 5 million, he's definitely worth it. Uh, a player of that kind of quality but i suspect the part exchange element definitely kind of tricked the game in some ways jello bear getting into the channel as well what a start from the lads i've been so impressed with the intensity that we're showing in this game it's oh what a pass again for jello bear and he's gone for goal that was poor from him uh, he should be doing better there goes round one round the side for kim campbell and it's a good block again because it's not like we're just dominating the ball. We are having chances. Some of them are slight low quality ones, but we're getting a decent quantity of them. Shimmich through again. Streak it's through again, and it's cleared again. Clips one long. Oh, around the side for Jellivare, and it's into the side netting again. Well, first half, we were going very well, and all of a sudden, they just came out of nowhere. We only saw one chance for them, but apparently they've done something. Uh, I don't know where that's come from, but we still look pretty good. I've actually moved him to the center just to see if that makes a difference. Uh, to some of our build-up play, potentially. And uh, not just the build-up itself, actually, but more in general. Wow, that was great defending. I don't believe the striker didn't go for that. Hodak, Konsa. Now, my concern is they might get in each other's way, but I don't think they will. Jellabear, can you even slip it through for him? Ramadan, Streakich. Oh, great piece of play again from Streakich to drop that off to Kem Campbell. Finds Candelaria again. Anderson now. Round the side for... Oh, he's nearly through. And Mihailovic is with the goal, and it's 2-0 now. Tony Mihailovic, first goal of the season from him. He's fresh off the bench. Yes, he is. He's only come on about 10 minutes ago, but he's grabbed the second goal, which could be so damn important for us getting through. Uh, I'm still concerned about having Strikic centrally. Might go those two in each other's way, but we'll have to see. Lovely work here. Strikic doesn't drop it off, but Mihailovic just takes a snapshot. Bottom corner. Keeper can't get there. It's 2-0 Dinamo Zagreb, and that is huge. Come on, lads. Well done to maybe get down those wide areas. And if we could find a chance for a third goal in this game, that would be enormous. Fisher, here's the chance. This is what we need. Streakich. Oh, what a ball. Lovely play. Oh, he's got runners left and right. Can he find one at the back post, perhaps? Streakich. Oh, Vlad has been brought down and he will take the penalty. And we have a chance now to go 3-0 up. And this second half has definitely gone off the rails a little bit for Ferenc Varos. And we are hopefully going to put ourselves in a... What? Does that count? Can we count that referee? Go on, you know you want to. Vlade Strikic from the penalty spot. Can he make it three? Yes, he can. Dinamo three, Ferenc Varos nil. Hey, Vlad is just a goal-scoring machine. Seven goals this season already. I think we've played five games. Wow, we're playing so much better here than we did against HJK. I guess maybe the tactics bedding in, players getting used to it. This is with a weaker side as well. Great win. This, if it finishes 3-0, would be an extremely good result for us because uh, it would take a lot of the pressure off of the second leg potentially. You know, a 3-0 home victory is very, very difficult to overcome if we were to just simply score a goal in Hungary. Uh, I guess I figured they'd be more difficult just on account of how much we sort of uh, flailed a little bit against HJK, if I'm honest. But it does look as though it's going to be a relatively straightforward result in the end, with once again, Vlade Strikic being a goddamn hero. Another brace. I think that's his second brace. No. Yeah, he got a hat-trick and a brace in separate games and other goals elsewhere. And it is 3-0 to Dino Zagreb. Huge result for the guys. I think we were always in control of this game, but Ferenc Varos definitely offered some stuff and Ivanovic had to work. So that is a superb result for us. Really, really pleased with that. Right, we've got Varazdin in a second. We'll do some, show you the other off-camera game as well for the second leg because we could try something for the second leg maybe since 3-0 is quite a good lead. 
So, we had a couple of off-camera games. The first one was at home against Lokomotiva, our affiliate club. Took us a little while to get going, made a few little changes at the start of the second half, and Shimic scored an absolute rocket into the bottom corner to make it 1-0 on 47 minutes. And then we kind of got a lot better. Won a penalty in the 91st minute, which Streakic was dispatching. 1-0 in the end, fairly comfortable stuff, but we really did sort of struggle to get going in this game, and I think there is an element of tiredness creeping in. Uh, we've not been able to rotate as much as I would have liked, just particularly in that central midfield role. That's where I thought we had a lot of depth, but those injuries to PP and as well to Matty Longstaff have given us a little bit of a problem there where it's Kem Campbell and then Regan Booty. Regan Booty. If you'd have asked me at the start of this season, would Regan Booty become a key member of this team, then I honestly would have said no. But yeah, here we are. This is the weirdest timeline. In between our two uh, European games, obviously the one we're about to play, we had a game against Verashtin, who are currently bottom of the league. Uh, Candelari with a great ball in. Shimic again at the back post, getting on it with a header to make it 1-0. Almost identical in terms of position uh, time to the last one. Uh, Roberts with the ball in then in the 68th minute. Basila on the end of it for 2-0. Dinamo. I think we could have had more goals in this game, if I'm honest. Uh, there were some good chances floating around. The front line really did tear them apart. Dean Fisher actually had a few little opportunities, which he managed to spurn quite frustratingly, but he also had six key passes to his name. He really is settling into that, and I actually tried him, um, sent for most of this game and it really does seem to like it at the moment so I think we might actually test that today in the game against Ferenc Farosh. League wise of course we're top four wins out of four a really strong start to the season for us which is exactly what we wanted but more importantly we're already what eight points clear of Hajduk <laughs> which is a really nice thing to see uh, eight points clear of Rijeka as well three above Osijek who I guess are going to be one of the big rivals but this year it really does seem that we've been given a great head start and that's with playing an a lot of extra games at the moment. So I'm really pleased with the way that we've bedded ourselves in. Uh, Shimic and Fisher with three goals each. Connor Roberts, already three assists. He's a god, isn't he? And also, we've only conceded one goal this season, which is a really nice sign about us defensively too. Ivanovic has been brilliant. Speaking of goalkeepers... I've agreed to sell Nikolic uh, on a simple fact that he complained like mad, basically. The whole squad got on my back and I was worried because uh, they'd kind of worried about, they'd, they'd kind of got my back before, but then we had a second team leader meeting. And at this point, I thought, you know what? We can't afford to piss the squad off and Ivanovic is doing just fine. So honestly, it didn't feel like the worst idea for me to sell him. So he's probably not gone yet, going to Napoli for 5.7 million pounds, but it would get 21K off our wage bill, bring us in another 6 million pounds, which I might be able to spend because there's a few players I'm a little bit interested in right towards the end of the window, just to bolster this squad a little bit going into the full season. Uh, so it's a shame that it's come to this, but it's hilarious because he's not even going to end up at the club that he complained about wanting to go to in the first place. He's managed to fail his way into a move to Napoli bell piece. And on the topic of players wanting to leave, Mihailovic has now missed training. Uh, now, he was spotted at a local model train museum on the same day. So either he's a belligerent wanker, which is definitely the case, or he's just very confused about what training meant. It looks likely if we go through, we'll play Rebel Salzburg, which will be quite a difficult game. But at least if we do go out of that round, we'll have hit the board's objective, which is key. And we'll get to play Europa League group stages, which arguably might actually be more fun as far as we'll have a chance to win games if we're in the Europa League group. But you never know. But it's not ruled out yet. And also, we're not through yet. Obviously, I rotated around a bit for the last game, so I want to bring that back. I might do a selection of Vice then because it's been so many changes right now. So Strikic back in, Sobby and Jella there. Uh, Anderson, yeah, he Anderson, does he lack a bit of natural fitness? He, a little bit. And it does seem that he require he cannot play Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday for more than like two in a row, quite simply. Uh Campbell concert, it's a pretty strong lineup in fairness. But we are still missing a bit of depth, because like I said, Regan Booty is still our backup central midfielder. <laughs> and he's getting game time too. I think I do want Jorga on the pitch as well. So, change I want to make for the today, just to try this out, is next match only, Streakic, boom, central. And that, I think, is all I want to do for today. What system do they play? Okay, so fairly sort of 4-2-3-1 type of situation. I found that working it through the middle works really nicely against the 4-4-2 sides, less so against these, perhaps. So, we're just going to make that one change. Now, this is a clear issue, but I'm just curious, just very curious. And we got a 3-0 lead, so I think we've, we've earned the right to try this today. And worst case scenario, I can bring on Dean Fisher in the second half if we want, move it back to the right because he's confident-ish on both feet. He'll be pumped up for this. He'll be sat on the bench listening to Walkman tapes of Diana Ross that he's no doubt borrowed off of his mum, and we can set off ourselves a chain reaction. Their goalkeeper's been almost unbeatable in goal for them. How do you solve the problem of getting past him? Well, we reminded them that he conceded three goals the last time he played against us. And I'm not even bothered about leaving out Tony Mihailovic at the moment. Um, he's His attitude is an issue and he needs to sort that out a little bit. Lovely evening here in Hungary. Three goal advantage from the first leg. Really, it's just we score a goal and everything is cushy. I was impressed with Diana as well in the league game. I, I really liked throwing in a couple of the younger players into some of the league matches lately, uh, particularly against some of the weaker sides because it just gives them a chance to get first team football, gives me a chance to keep the rest of the team fresh. A streak is just through and he's already got a chance this time on his right foot hilariously, but he got into the right position. Great opportunity for us right there. Good work. 
All the flares are up. Roberts' is ball. Hodak's header. He's only scored two goals for the club, and they've both come in European away ties. I tell you what. Some people have specialties. Some people are plumbers. Some people are candlestick makers, butchers, bakers, and whatnot. If it's a Hodak, he's a specialist in scoring goals in European away legs. And I tell you what, if it's one thing to specialise in, I'm all right with that. Hodak with the goal, 4-0, chilly time. Roberts' is ball. Basila knocks it down, and there at the back post is Vlade Strikic. 2-0 to Dinamo. Eight goals this season for Vlade Strikic already. Now, albeit seven of which have been in the Champions League, which... It's both good and bad, I suppose. Lovely work from Basil. Look at this flick on header. And Streakic just sneaking in there. Oh, 5 0 on Ag. And we are looking very nice right now. Okay, so they had a few little shots towards the end of the half, but we've been in pretty much total control of this game so far. Hodak and Streakic, albeit with Adjibal on set pieces in this game. It's not been our most free flowing performance, but hey, sometimes you just got to have that. Since we're all about that experiment life, I'm going to dump it through the middle and just see if it makes any difference, even against these types of shows. Maybe that is just the play from now on. Perhaps. We'll have to see. See if we've got any more output from doing that. Some quite nice football coming out here from Ferenc Farish. They've got bodies in the... What? That is a really nice goal. Ryan May gets a goal back for Ferenc Farish. It's still 5-1 on aggregate, so there's really little chance for them here. But, yeah. yeah. Um, I think maybe the complacency sets in when you're 5-0 up on aggregate, perhaps. with some nice football they got away with here. I think maybe we could do better there. Basila could probably get a touch on it, and so could Hodak, to be fair. Neither of them have really covered themselves in treacle on that one. They're certainly throwing some bodies forward now, which could leave us some gaps on the break. But look at that. A bit of an overlap as well. So Rescue could cut inside and get a shot away. It's good football. It's really good football. We basically sort of carried ourselves through this tie in the end on the base on the strength of that first leg victory. But I guess that's what we kind of expected. I mean, we were experimenting in this second game, so it's unsurprising that we haven't been as good. Although it would have been nice to see if we were. But then again, we have still come up with the victory at the end of the day, so I can't complain too much. Fisher could maybe not around the side. No, he doesn't. Oh, actually, yes, he does. Riga Booty has blazed it over the crossbar. No, Rokov managed to make the save again. Wow, that was a good effort from Regan Booty. Imagine if Regan Booty had scored in the Champions League. That would probably be, like, mission complete at that point, right? Hodak with the flicked head wide. But definitely more defensively stable than we were against HJK in that second leg. And we've got the end of, win at the end of that. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Just a terrible start of the second half. They sort of ground their way back in. But we win the match on the night. That's what matters. And we will obviously be playing RV Salzburg. It's Salzburg? There's a, there's a P in it now. Um, Don't drink Red Bull. There's P in it. Red Bull Salzburg for a place in the Champions League group stages. I suspect it could potentially be a bridge too far. Um, but regardless, we're going to be guaranteed some kind of group stage performances right now. And as I said earlier, we'll be doing like three live comms and episode to really get those group stages games done. Uh, well, rather to show... I don't want to prolong it too much, but I'm also enjoying showing you this extra European stuff just because it's new to this save. We've never played in Europe before and it's been fun. Uh, if we were to do another season at Zagreb after this, I probably wouldn't start the season until like maybe here because obviously some of these are a bit of a foregone conclusion. Although, HJK, you just don't know. So... If you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, drop a like on the video. That'd be spectacular. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome too. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and of course on Saturdays. So that's pretty sick, particularly this Saturday because, uh, well, uh, Champions League final with Tromsø. That's going to be sick. The fourth one in a row, incredibly. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for, well, make or break. Champions League or bust. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.